This video will show the process I went through, the glazing process and acrylic paints to create this particular painting, a panel painting. There's a couple others that are shown on here. This could be done in oil as well. Uh, what I'm showing right here in two of the other panels is the underpainting, which is done in a monochromatic scheme, which is the full value range from white to black, but in a color. Traditionally, colors like burnt umber or terra verde would, would have been used, and then you'd glaze over the top of that. The drawings that I do on these panels actually are emphasizing the fact uh, of shape over line. Here I'm using a dioxazine purple. Um, I'm only mixing it with water here, and it's more of a wash, more like a watercolor wash than a, a true glaze. And I'm building up the colors on the value, really, on top of each other. So when some dries, then I go back over and slowly build up the full range of value in there. So the full range of the values will show up in the figure and in the background in this one color, this monochromatic color, before I ever start laying down any of the other colors on top of that, which is what the glazing actually is. So you want this to be a fully accurate rendering, almost like a drawing in color with that full value range so that you can have that range showing through as you start putting the other colors, the other glazing colors on top of that. Every subtlety that uh, needs to show up in the final piece really needs to show up in this to begin with. Sometimes my students take uh, way too long on this, but it is an important process. Right here you can see that I'm using cadmium yellow, again with water, and I'm glazing over the dried uh, purple painting. And what that kind of does is neutralizes the color. It's the complement of the purple. And um, when that neutralizes it, it turns it a little bit more brown and it's a little less intense. Now I'm mixing the glazing medium with quidacridone violet. It's kind of a magenta color. It's a cooler red, more like uh, a lizard and crimson would be another one as well. And I'm putting that in the background to deepen that space uh, that is the darkest part on there already. Then I'm mixing with even more glazing medium, which actually makes that look like a pink but you'll notice in some of the things later on that um, the medium makes the color look a little bit lighter and whitish than what it will be when it finally dries. So I'm taking that lighter, thinned out version and going over the figure with that. As we look really close here, you'll see that the canvas um, is actually creating little pits um, and that the color kind of pools up in that sometimes. That's why you want a really flat uh, background, but these are the panels that I had to use, so I went ahead and used them. Um, besides the violet and the, uh, the reddish color and the yellow color, you can see little bits over here where I've already put in a green that's like a viridian or a phthalo green and how that's uh, taking some of that violet away again and, and the red. Again, the last color that was on this was the reddish color, that more magenta color, and now I'm putting the green on, which is its complement. You see how light it looks in some of those areas, but as I spread it out, it gets to be much more closer to a black in that area. So over the figure, I've actually placed an even more thin down. It has more glazing medium uh, green, and that is deepening up some of the shadows. Now that that part is dry, I'm mixing up a mixture using cadmium yellow, cadmium red, yellow ochre, and a little bit of titanium white. I will mix that mixture with some glazing medium, and this is going to bring out some of the highlight areas because I've gone over the figure so many times now that some of the whiter, brighter highlights have been toned down and darkened up a little bit. Now I'm not layering this on in a very thick uh, impasto way. I'm actually doing it quite thin, and you'll see sometimes I wipe with my fingers to get some of the, the paint off and brush part of it away. Um, now I'm actually putting a little more orange version of that previous mixture on top of some of the, probably more of the shadowed areas. And obviously it, I'm painting much quicker in this video than what I really am. Uh, the next color is yellow ochre and cadmium yellow, a little bit of white in there. Um, in, in varying degrees, and so that's making the figure a little bit more yellow than the orangish color that it was just prior to that. 
some of that yellow is now going into the background so that we can see uh, some of the lighting difference so it's not one big flat color in the background. Now I'm taking cerulean blue, uh, which is kind of a greenish blue with a large amount of the glazing medium in it and going through the background to alter that a little bit. Some of that's going into the figure as well to gray up the figure. Again, I'm working with the complements because it was an orange that was used just prior to that. Um, so you get a much more natural feel to the figure when you kind of flip back and forth between these colors uh, and then they neutralize each other as, as you're going through. So I've already used kind of a cooler red and a warmer red. Now I've mixed those two together, the cadmium red and the more magenta quadacridone violet, and I'm placing more of a primary, just kind of a pure red, both over the figure and then into the background some. Um, as I change things back and forth, um, I'll see, sense that it needs to be either warmer or cooler in different areas. Um, right now I'm painting the, the border strips that go through there. They use all the same colors that I'm using everywhere else, um, but usually with a little more white in them or glazed a little bit more. Again, the brighter white yellowish color is coming in for highlighting. This is probably made up of cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, and some titanium white. Uh, every time I tone it down with color, I need to go back in and brighten it up a, a, get a, a little bit more. Um, here I'm using that same color uh, to an effect with the canvas that's in the background to create kind of a, a softer, more diffused light there. Most of my students tend to think that uh, you just put one or two glazes on and you're done. Um, to get a real natural feel, you actually have to do layer after layer after layer after layer, and you keep altering what was on before. So you may need to darken or lighten something over and over and over again until you get the real natural view of what you want it to be. Um, in the background now, I believe I'm using um, probably some Prussian blue. Um, and now I'm putting it in on the figure. That is one of the deepest and most intense colors that's on the palette. Um, so I mixed it with a large amount of medium as I go into the figure because I don't want that to, to overpower, but it really does deepen up the background quite a bit so that the background essentially looks black, although it's a mixture of many different colors. And here I'm using the same orange again that I've used over and over again with that mix of cadmiums, red and yellow and yellow ochre. Um, I don't even think there's any white in it. What this is doing is evening out the figure so that the bright highlights and the deep areas of the, um, the shadows are kind of getting flattened out so that it looks like one whole figure together instead of something that is uh, too contrasty. So I use the colors over and over in different places, and it's not like I just fill this figure in with orange. I'm sticking that same orange in the background. One problem I often see with students is that uh, when they put a glaze in, they put the most obvious color, the red for an apple, without thinking of some of the contrasting colors, and that will make your painting look more like it's kind of a coloring book project instead of nat more natural. So you have to have a variety of colors that come through in many different places, both cooler and warmer colors. Here in the background, I'm returning to that dioxazine purple that I first started out with in the underpainting. Um, so it's toning down some of the yellows and the reds, and you see how that evens things out. Um, then I go back into the figure and deepen up again. There's the beard and the hair and some of the areas that are shadows uh, there on the legs that you can see that I'm working with that. And then once more, the same kinds of highlights with that bright white-yellow mixture uh, because I had toned things down a little further than I needed to. And now I'm getting closer to putting some of the more finishing touches on it. So I, I look back to the photograph that's there and see where I really need to brighten some things up. Um, you have to be able to see what's happening in the background too, and so the darker the background gets, sometimes the lighter I want these highlights to be because there's higher contrast between those two areas. Some of these highlight areas I want to be very intense. 
others I'm still kind of wiping out as I go, but I'm looking for shape areas. I'm not doing this all with lines. So I look at the photograph and see where the shapes of muscles are, and I put those shapes in in this value, sometimes lighter, sometimes a little more evened out. Um, so here's another red-orange mixture to kind of soften the value changes and pull the, the painting together. Several other little touches of color were placed all throughout this uh, painting, and um, you're getting the main aspects of how this is working here, but um, there's a lot more that happens with this. It actually took a couple weeks on and off to create this painting. When you do the close-up there, you can see all those little touches of color coming through in different places. I've painted it very flatly, even though there's a textured surface. You don't want any brush strokes to be coming really through because they will impact the, the layers that uh, happen subsequent to that. 